Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 13.6 GM or the gold master version or final version that will be available to the public fairly soon probably next week at this point. This comes in at a very large 3.75 gigabytes on my iPhone 11, and it's about four gigabytes or three and a half gigabytes on all of these other devices as well. The iPad air two, the iPhone six S plus. And so this particular version is the final version that will be released to the public. But if you're a developer, you just have it early. You may get it as a public beta tester as well. And if you want to stay on this version without updating to maybe an iOS 13.6.1 or 13.7, you'll want to delete the profile after installing this. If you want further updates, well, then you can just leave it there, but to, to remove the profile, go to settings, go down to general, go down to profile, tap on the profile and remove it. Once you remove it, you'll no longer get these beta updates. Now today, Apple also released iOS 14 public beta two. And so I have it here on my iPhone 11 pro and this particular beta is the exact same beta that we have on iOS as we have for developers. So if you are on iOS 14 developer beta two, iOS 14 public beta two is the exact same beta. So there's no reason to switch between the two. They're the same build number, same everything. Now let's take a look at the build number with iOS 13.6. You can see the build number is 17 G six, eight, and this particular build adds a few new features. So if you're not familiar with iOS 13.6 betas already, there's some new features. There is no new modem update. If you're coming from the betas, you may have one if you're on an older version of iOS though. Now the first new feature has to do with what's called car key or digital car keys. This is not something you can generally see unless you have a car that supports it. So for example, BMW just started manufacturing a car that will allow you to use your phone as a digital car key by using the NFC tag in the back. So you can tap this to your car and unlock it. You would set that up in wallet. So if you have the car key feature on your car, you just go to wallet, add the card here, and then you'll be able to use your phone to unlock your car. It will be updated in the future so that you can just leave it in your pocket and walk up to your car and unlock it. But for now you'll have to tap it to the car. It also has a new mode called power reserve. If you're using the Apple car key that allows the phone to continue working for a car key, even if your phone has zero battery. It will last for up to about five hours. So if your phone has zero battery, it will continue to work. Now, Apple has updated Apple news. Now I haven't really used Apple news in quite some time, but if we go into Apple news, you'll see we have today news plus and a new audio button here at the bottom. And then following, if we go to the audio button, we now have a daily recap of the news or a news briefing for the day. It's free. You can play it and listen to it. And you can also listen to it in the Apple podcast app. Now, if you're an Apple news plus subscriber, you can listen to them as well. So under the Apple news plus icon, you can listen to a lot of different news stories. If you want to do that, or maybe you are visually impaired, you'll be able to listen to the news that way. If it's supported. Also, if you live in New York city, LA, Houston, or San Francisco, there's more comprehensive news coverage as well. And then finally the daily news covering can be customized. So the daily news newsletter, maybe you're getting that newsletter every day and you don't want to follow certain topics. You can just remove them. And I added these quite some time ago, but you'll see notification and email under notification and email. This is where you can customize that. So choose which channels send notifications to all your iCloud devices and also your daily news as well. So if you don't care about that, just turn them off and you're good to go there. Now within the health app, they've updated a couple features as well. So if we go into health, you'll see your normal summary, but if we tap on browse on the bottom, you'll see that we have health categories and now we have symptoms under symptoms. We can now add symptoms or information for things like chills, congestion, coughing, and many other things. So maybe you want to record this information. Maybe your doctor has asked you to record it. You can do that. You can share it with third party apps or not use it at all. It's completely up to you and 100% private unless you choose to share it. So you want to record that you had a sore throat or maybe you had a fever. You can do that. Maybe nausea. We'll go in here. You pick the day add data and you can pick whether it was present, mild, moderate, severe, and when you had it and when it started. So you can add all of these things to better help with tracking some issues you might be having, updating your doctor, or maybe you just want to keep track of this. Now under settings, there's a new option for updates. So if you go to general 
and then you go to software update, you'll see that I'm up to date. But if we go to customize automatic updates, we have some new options. We can download iOS updates and install iOS updates automatically. We don't have to have this on at all. We can turn it on or have it install iOS updates by itself. You can use this or you don't have to, but it's nice that they've added that. If you don't want to install it, don't want it using space on your phone, you can turn it off altogether and only update when you choose to. Now, something you can't necessarily see as easy is for administrators. If you're using Wi-Fi and you're an administrator, you can now specify domains to be excluded from always connected VPN connections. So if you're on a domain, maybe for work, with VPN, they can exclude domains that you're able to visit and things like that through that VPN. It's up to the administrator and that's mostly for work environments. Now with this update comes a bunch of bug fixes as well, and they fixed an issue where apps may become unresponsive when syncing iCloud drive data. So if you were having that issue and it was trying to sync data and your phone completely froze up well, your apps should now work properly. They've also fixed an issue where some calls from Saskatchewan appeared as originating from the United States. That's kind of an odd bug, but if you were having that, it should be resolved. Now, if you're someone that uses an eSIM instead of a physical SIM in the SIM card tray and you're using roaming, there was a bug where it may show as though it was off, even though it was on. So they've now fixed this. Also, if you're using Wi-Fi calling, which many people are, Wi-Fi calling was having some issues with audio and that should be resolved. So maybe it was dropping audio and I've had that, that issue personally, it was dropping audio. So I turned off Wi-Fi calling and it fixed it. They've now resolved it. So you should be able to use it properly. Now, if you were having issues registering your phone for Wi-Fi calling, maybe you have an iPhone 6S or maybe even an older iPhone SE, those may not have registered properly for Wi-Fi calling. That will now work. Apple has resolved that as well. Now, sometimes the keyboard would show up even when a third party keyboard was connected to an iPad. So maybe you were using an iPad pro with a keyboard and you went to type, but the keyboard would pop up on the screen. That's been resolved for the iPad and iPhone as well. If you're using a keyboard, so maybe you were going to Safari, maybe you just wanted to type in an address. You didn't want this keyboard to pop up and it was popping up. If you're using an external keyboard that shouldn't be doing that any longer. Now, also Apple has fixed an issue where Japanese keyboards would incorrectly be mapped as us keyboards. So that should be resolved. And then finally control center will work properly. Now, if you're using assistive touch before it may have locked up or frozen, if you were using assistive touch, now control center should respond as you would expect when using assistive touch. Now, those are all of the fixes that they've mentioned. They've also linked to security updates, but they have not updated that page yet. So expect some security updates in the background as well with this particular update. Now, as far as battery with this update, well, this has not been my main version of iOS that I've been using. I've been trying out iOS 14, but many people that I've asked say that battery is actually quite good. They're saying that it's better than iOS 13.5.1 and it's definitely fixed whatever bugs they were having with the previous version. So you'll see, I haven't used it. I just turned this on today to update it and it has one hour and 17 minutes of screen on time and it's barely used any battery. So I didn't even charge it to 100%. So in general, expect it to be much better than you were having before. There were some bugs they are probably fixed and your battery should be improved. Now, as far as performance, well, performance seems to be pretty good. I don't know that it's any different than iOS 13.5.1, but on older devices such as this iPhone 6s plus, You'll see that it takes a moment to load via Wi-Fi, but scrolling is nice and smooth. Going between different pages is good. Going into apps like Minecraft seem to be fine. We'll wait for it to load here. It's nice and fast, like you would expect. And this is the oldest supported device for iOS 13 and iOS 14. So now that we're in, it loaded pretty pretty quickly. It was fairly reasonable. You'll see that frame rates seem to be pretty good. So if you're playing Minecraft or maybe you're playing Fortnite or something else, expect performance to be the same or better depending on what you're playing and how things are performing for you. It seems to be okay. The iPad is the same as well. This is the oldest supported iPad. And again, scrolling is nice and smooth. Apps are opening fairly quickly. You'll see it's a little stuttery there, but that's what I had before. And then it kind of smooths up as you use it. And in general, the performance seems to be pretty good. I don't expect it to be any worse on iOS 14. In fact, it may be a little bit better.
Now, as far as the benchmarks go, let's take a look at those. I used Geekbench 5, so if you have scores that are much higher, you may be on an older version, but Geekbench 5 is the latest. And on the iPhone 11, I scored 1,322 for single core, 3,266 for multi-core. That's pretty good, given what we had before and given the fact that I ran this immediately after installing it. So you can see here's the different days. On June 30th, it was a little bit lower, so it's actually performing pretty good. Multi-core is a little higher. Single core is a little bit lower, depending on which number you're looking at and which day. But in general, it's pretty decent performance overall. Now let's take a look at all of these devices. On the left, I have the iPad Air 2. In the middle, I have the iPhone 6S Plus. And on the right, I have the iPhone 11. And if your scores are anywhere in between these, you should be good to go. Or if you're close on some of the newer devices, expect similar performance or very good performance. I'd love to hear how it's going for you in the comments below. That's it for iOS 13.6 GM. Expect the final version, which is this version. You'll already just have it ahead of time. Expect it to roll out within a week or so usually. And also iOS 13.6 may be one of the last versions until iOS 14. Although it's possible we could see an iOS 13.7 before then, although I'm not sure what features Apple would add with that. So maybe we'll have an iOS 13.6.1 or something along those lines. Now, if you want to try out the iOS 14 betas, the public beta is now out. I created a video just before this one on how to update to that. If you want to try it out, just keep in mind, you can't go back without a computer. So if you want to try that, I'll leave a link to how to do that in the description below. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description as I always do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.